Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is about being an observer rather than a reactor. Let's use let's use look at the, the best example, Jesus. Okay, when he was being persecuted, did you see him reacting to any of the things that happened to him or read about him reacting? The only time he reacted out of emotion was when his his father's house, the temple, when they were doing when they were like bartering and trading and basically using the house for a money making thing rather than a place of worship. That's the only time he ever reacted out of his emotion. But throughout the whole Bible, his temperament, he was always an observer, never a reactor. Think about when they arrested him. You know, when they arrested him, he didn't react. Peter reacted. I remember cut off that guy's ear, but he didn't react. One, because he knew who he was. Okay, so let's use Jesus as our is as our prime example that we don't want to be reactors and okay i'm very guilty of this that's why god like showed this to me on something that i need to work on but i think that it could be very helpful for a lot of people too because other people might struggle with this but um especially if you're like a passionate person and you put all of your heart into things you know and social media kind of has been training this thing in us like like think about it okay social media people put their best pictures forward right a lot of people are creative and it can be a very good thing but it can also be a bad thing if you know the unhealed parts of ourselves start comparing our lives to other people's lives okay because again people can put their best pictures their best situations on display right but that's not what, you know, so, and everyone has broken or unhealed parts of them, you know, because all of our environments work, but let's not be a subject of our environment. Let's be more like Jesus and let's be observe, like observers rather than reactors. Because think about it, if you're a reactor, then you're letting your environment control you. Know? And, and again I'm guilty of this I haven't mastered this but God really like broke it down to me that when we react we're we're not in control the environment's in control the person who's trying to trigger us or get us upset is in control the devil is controlling us you see so it's super important that we we just simply observe and not react with our emotions a specific example so say you look at a a picture and yes there are signs and symbols for things but are you really gonna be in alignment with the devil by getting angry at something you see in a picture or like something someone's doing okay so let's let's use relationships for example because if any of my exes um watch these videos they know i'm extremely like i'm super observant and intuitive but i wasn't always correct in my assumptions I'll, I'll admit that but especially relationships right when you're um that's why you need god though because these soul ties if you don't have god in it and you're fornicating without being in a marriage you're kind of already setting yourself up for you know like pain and disappointment because think about it okay the human body like all other mammals the reason why they fornicate is to reproduce right that's why god made adam and eve to basically make the human population on earth so when you're sharing your body and, and therefore your soul with another person and you're not under the marriage covenant you guys don't have a commitment like that a, a covenant commitment under god you're setting yourself up for a lot of pain trust me because and stress and worry and destruction I'll, I'll be honest okay but so it's super important to like especially to young people value yourselves like young women value your body young men value your body like our bodies now after reading the bible and getting to know god more i do believe that's why i've been abstinent for almost 10 years you know like 
I haven't even held hands with someone. Yeah, in 10 years. Close to 10 years, almost 10 years. Yeah, well maybe I held hands in like five years. Okay, but um but yeah, as far as like I haven't kissed anyone in you know or like intimate been intimate I haven't been intimate with anyone for almost 10 years okay and the reason is now I understand the value of our bodies like our bodies are meant to worship God like our bodies are a vessel here on earth to worship the almighty God in heaven like that's why he designed it it's not meant to just freely give it away to other people and create all these soul ties that eventually will destroy us because your soul is going to be in a bunch of different places and that's not what it's meant to be you know you know like how god is our one and only god your kingdom spouse is supposed to be your one and only person i mean if you've already made a lot of mistakes like i have i mean not saying you know my all my situations i'm not calling you guys mistakes in case any of my exes like come across this but i'm just saying that fornication is made for marriage like your body is a gift man and woman men and women not only women but men too like your body is a gift to the other person you know and you should only be sharing it if they're willing to make that kind of commitment like marriage to you and if you can see them as a the father of your children because that's the whole reason for like mating you know, if you want to take it to an animalistic level, like the whole reason, hi Lord, the whole reason for mating is, you know, it's under the marriage covenant. That's what that's what God wants for us, and it'll save you a lot of pain. It'll lay, it'll save you from self destruction, in all honesty, because that's what having sex out of marriage does. You know. When you're married and you guys make that covenant under God and you put God first before each other, then you're both keeping yourself accountable to a higher power than us and humankind, you know? So it's more likely that you'll want to do the right thing, not to please the other person. Because think about it. At any one time, you can have resentment towards that person if they do, you know, things that don't make you happy. So, and it'll cause you to want to, I know for myself in the past, you know get revenge and by doing stupid things that just destroy the relationship further but if you both have god first then you won't do those stupid things because you'll know that god is always watching and that god knows everything and that you wouldn't want to disappoint him even though you're mad at the other person you see how having the higher po the highest power of keeping you both accountable is like a, a healthy it's a healthy basis for a relationship Okay, so that's why that's my that's my only criteria now like they, you have to believe in God and in order to share my body it's, it's gonna be have it's gonna have to be in marriage okay and, I, and I've stuck with it for 10 years and it's not like I haven't had or still have opportunities like I do but you know I, I've been there and it's only led to pain and like hurt and worry and stress so that's a message to young people like i know the internet and everything they make sex seem so these dating websites people that just want to meet to hook up if they're broken inside before they start doing that they're breaking themselves down even more by giving a piece of their soul away to all these random strangers okay think about that so young people value your bodies because god values your your body is your temple it's a temple to worship the almighty god and he values you so much that he has a person a kingdom spouse specifically designated to you who will value you just as much as he does okay and then when you both love god i mean I, i'm i'm waiting for that and you know I'm very like if God if God wants me to be married I'll be married but if he doesn't like I'm okay with that too so I'm not like in a rush or 
and I know I'm kind of, you know, older already, but I'm, I'm, um, God is just showing up, I'm sorry, he just, God is so good, and he just has a way of making you smile all day, you guys, it's worth it, it's worth it to read the Bible, even though, you know, a lot of things will come against you, it's so worth it to read the Bible, to love God, to pray to him, to put all of your, your worries and your battles in his hands, because there's a lot of peace that comes with that, and it'll give you signs, like, that there's joy right after this tribulation, you know, I mean, I'm going through things right now, but he's, he's showing me signs that there's going to be joy after this situation, and I believe him, you know, because he's done it before, and he's going to do the same thing for you, too, and believers, I'm sure, like, I don't know how people, I don't know how people go through this life without God, like, I don't know how you, how you do it, because one, life is not easy, and I can't imagine, like, all of the situations, and trials and tribulations, and the devil's activities, like, and not having God to rely on. So if you're not a believer and you came across this video, I would highly suggest you get into it. Get into the Bible. Develop your own relationship with God. You know, a lot of people say, I go to church or like, you know, I highlight the Bible and this and that. But, and that's great. But God wants a relationship with you. He wants a personal relationship with you. You know, he wants you to acknowledge him for being the creator of everything. He wants you to acknowledge him like in all of your thoughts. If you can, that'd be the that'd be the best way to get close to him. Is like, I mean, I'll ask him questions at home. Like, God, what cup should I use to drink my coffee out of, or you know, just anything. I'll, I try to include him as much as I can and keep him in my thoughts. And that's how you should, you develop your relationship with him, and he'll he'll show up more you'll see him because he's in everything it's just the devil blinds us to that because he's everywhere what think about it omnipotent omni omnipresent and omniscient he knows all things he sees all things and he's everywhere at once i'm sorry i keep speaking but he's everywhere at once so he's in everything and surrounding us but the devil blinds us to it so it's it's once, but once you get closer to him, then you start to see him in everything that he is around you at all times and present and all knowing and all seeing. Okay, God is so good. Like, God is so, so good. Get a relationship with him. He wants, he wants you to, but he's not. See, the thing about God and Jesus is Jesus is a gentleman. Like, God won't force you, He gave you free will so that you can. Because, you know, people don't like, we don't like to be forced or oppressed to do anything, you know? That's from God. Like, power trips are from the enemy. But God is very loving and his arms are, are always open to you and he just wants you to run, run into them because he's not going to force you to. He's a loving, merciful, gentle God. Like yesterday, I, I watched the sunset and he was just speaking to me through the sunset. Like the sunset was, it was a very like soft colored sunset. It had like light grays and pastel pinks and pastel purples and pastel blues, you know, kind of like Easter. The resurrection, hey, Jesus. Okay. But yeah, it's just like the sunset was so soft and beautiful and warming and like I just listened to a bunch of testimonies about people who have gone to heaven and then they and then the colors like God is there's a lot of colors in heaven and when I seen all the colors he was displaying yesterday evening in their in their softness and just the way that like I knew that was a he gives us glimpses of heaven here on earth you know in those things and if we grow a relationship with him we'll see him in it like we'll see god in everywhere he's everywhere he's in everything he's he's constantly around us but the devil blinds us to it so get a relationship with him so you can get in tune with him and see those things because he was in yesterday's sunset and i was like god that's totally how you are you're like gentle and soft and like
just loving and you're like a warm hug, you know, that you need at exactly the right time. Like God is, God is good. And sometimes he's in sunsets that are like blazing and they're like bright oranges and reds and just vivid and vibrant. And God's like that too, you know, he can show up like that too. But having a relationship with him really makes you into like oranges, you know, those kind of sunsets, like fiery, just they're breathtaking too. They're they're beautiful too, as as the soft sunsets are. It's, it's a relationship. God God wants a relationship with you. That's He wants a personal relationship. So seek Him, pray, talk to Him as much as you can throughout your day. Prayer, be constant in prayer. God is good. Okay, but the I'm sorry, I, I kind of went on a tangent on this video, like like I have done in the previous video, but it was about uh, reacting, not being a reactive person. Let's be observers, because I mean I am very guilty. I'm a reactor. I'll tell you straight now because I'm very passionate. Like I'm passionate about work. Like you know having things be perfect and only god is perfect so we have to also we have to just be observers not reactors because think about it, when we react we're we're letting the environment control us you know and think about like big picture right so social media we're going social media we're looking at all of these things and um, scrolling and reacting to everyone's like pictures that's why I don't really do social media too much because I mean I can feel myself like it's a feeling I'm like oh I have to stop doing this but um so we're letting social media control us if you want to talk about like becoming a robot it's kind of training us to be like that because we're looking at these situations we're reacting getting upset and then when we walk around in society we may see those things and then we, we're reacting in the same way and then we're not in control of our emotions the situation the environment the people the pictures you know what i mean people's like our emotions they're if they look at you if they say something like then we're not in control at all do you see how that works that you know so we want to be observers like jesus think about the time when he was being persecuted he didn't react at all. I mean, imagine if someone stuck a crown of thorns on your around, on your head. You probably want to, like, I got, I had like a hundred something stitches in these two fingers, right? And and that's why. Okay, I'm gonna share a personal story, and it's kind of embarrassing, but um. Okay, maybe I won't, cause I don't want to glorify. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's let's move let's move forward from those situations but you don't want to be a reactor you want to be an observer you know anyone else like we'd yell or try to like hit someone or but Jesus just was he was so strong and he was just in control of himself the whole time you know let's think about King Nebuchadnezzar let's think about that example King Nebuchadnezzar he got super upset he got so mad and reactive that that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego didn't bow down to his golden statue. He got so mad and so power trippy that they didn't bow down that he's like, throw them in the furnace and heat the heat it up seven times hotter. That's how reactive King Nebuchadnezzar was on his power trip. Okay, but what happened? What did he observe after the fact? So did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego like wail and plead and cry and oh my gosh help no no don't do it no you know they just stayed confident it says in in scripture stand against the devil they just stood and they said well we, we won't bow to your statue because the only thing the only thing we bow down to is our our most high god you know our almighty god in heaven and they just stood on that they were even polite about it. They didn't react. They just said, no, we're not going to do that. You know, we're not going to... God's a jealous God. Like, we're not going to praise your statue. We're going to praise our God. That's who we exalt. 
So he got mad on his power trip. And what did he do? Throw them in the fire seven times hotter. His like guards who, his guards who that threw him in the fire, threw them in the fire, they burned instantly by getting even close to the furnace. And what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What did King Nebuchadnezzar observe? He observed Jesus in the fire with them. That's what he observed. And when they came out of the, the furnace, not even smelling like smoke, not a hair on their head singed, he started praising God. You know? So he went from reacting on a power trip, what a lot of people do. I know I, I was a reactive power tripper, especially in relationships, to observing the hand of God. And that God is the one who's really in control. And how he protects those who are obedient and who are faithful to him. Okay, so don't react. Let's observe. Just observe and don't let your don't let the environment control your emotions don't let pictures control your emotions don't let other human beings control your emotions like we're observers not reactors otherwise think about it you're pretty much a robot to your environment like you're giving everyone else the remote control to how you conduct yourself which therefore you know your actions become your character and you're gonna give that remote control to everyone else but yourself or but to God. You know, the way we give the remote control to God is by reading the Bible and learning about how he wants us. The New Testament, you know, Paul writes a lot about how we should conduct ourselves as believers. That's in the New Testament. And that's who we wanna give the remote control to is God. Because all good things come from God and only good things can you know happen when you're in alignment with him okay so don't give your remote control to everyone else we're not robots products of our environment products of other people letting them control our emotions if anything we want to give that remote control to only one highest spiritual entity and that's God the Almighty God in heaven who because you know why he wants what's best for us He's, he isn't trying to frustrate you or make you angry or, you know, any plans of the devil. He's, all of God's plans for you are for good. God is the only one who's always 100% of the time going to have your best interests in mind. Okay, why wouldn't you want someone like that to have control over your temperament, your character, your life? You know, God is good. Praise Him, exalt Him, worship Him. We love that. Love Him, most important thing. Love Him because He loves you. He's so merciful. There are sometimes like my enemies, I'm like, oh God, I know you couldn't forgive them for that. And then I think about Jonah, like when he got mad that God spared the people of Nineveh because they were they were evil and wicked, right? And he sent Jonah there to give them a warning that if if they didn't change their ways and repent, that he would destroy them. And when and when they did, Jonah finally, you know, he ran and then, you know, he got he got vomited up by the whale, right? God put him in a whale, the stomach of a whale, and then he warned those people because they were enemies to Jonah's people and when God did spare them Jonah was mad he was like oh you're such a merciful God I knew what I knew you would spare them like he was so mad to the point where he's like take my life already like you spare them and you, you've seen their wickedness but yet you know what I mean like he was obedient to God and went through and warned them but when they repented God is that merciful God is that loving so a lot of times I have Jonah moments all the time I'm like God, my enemies, like, I don't want to see them in heaven, you know? I don't want to see them in eternity in heaven, but that's my flesh. That's carnal thinking because God truly is a very merciful and loving God, and He can forgive anyone of any sin at any time.
would give them mercy. If they repent and they're truly sorry for what they did and they try to change their ways, God will forgive you and accept you. Like he's not a judgmental God. You know, a lot of us put our, our human like doctrines, we make him to be more strict than he is. And yes, he has strict, there are things that he expects of us, but he's very loving and gentle, gentle and merciful. You know, he, he will forgive you of any sin. That's why, that's why Jesus, that's, that's why he sent Jesus, his son in the flesh so that we can repent for our sins and we can have salvation. What is salvation? Like we can be forgiven for our sins. Okay, Jesus was the sacrifice for us. He knows humankind like that we're, we're full of sin. We have, to, we have to constantly be cleansed by the blood of Jesus daily, if not every so many hours, you know. The blood of Jesus holds power in the spiritual realm, like ultimate power. Let's give you an example. Yesterday, so I'm very passionate at work. So the devil will attack the things that you're passionate about or you, you know, the things you value. So I'm very particular. Like I like things, you know, like you want to give, like the way I think about it is you want to give your guests, customers, you know, the best product that they're paying for. So I'm very, so at work I'll get like a lot of attacks. So like yesterday I was, while well, I was praying to, for one of the departments because I kind of sensed like you know not good spiritual activity in that department so I prayed for the department like you know harm harmony within the employees and I covered it with all the with the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and then I got attacked like my left ankle I had a shooting pain in my ankle and I'm like this doesn't match I didn't twist my ankle like all that what did I do I just prayed for my coworkers you know, it doesn't match and now I have a shooting pain in my ankle so I was like okay this is a spiritual attack so I simply said I'm covered with the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and sure enough it was spiritual because it the pain went away so these whatevers that are trying to attack you they know that Jesus has dominion that Jesus has already overcome the world and the and all evil okay Jesus his blood Holds ultimate power in the spirit realm and as a believer you have access to that okay so that's something to help you protect yourselves just every day walking around here because only until we get to heaven can we just you know be relieved of all evil only in heaven because the devil is not allowed there neither are his whatever's but yeah, so back to God's goodness. God is good. Praise God. Give him the, give him the remote control for, for everything because only good things can come with that. Okay, praise God. Give him all the glory. Praise King Jesus. If he didn't did, do what he did, you know, we couldn't use his name. We couldn't use his blood in warfare for protection, for purification. Okay, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, love you. The bunnies and I love you too.